Friday, everybody. Yo. Yo. Man, what a what a what a what a wild week. It's been a wild week. Yeah. Wild week. It's been a wild week. Are you gonna hit the other coast before the weekend? Uh, uh, make it a make it a make it a double coaster? No, no. <laughs> a roller coaster? Nope, nope. Just gonna You don't wanna go? Just you don't wanna pop off to shipping off to Boston so you can Ooh. say that you saw both oceans See the in tea? one week? Oh my I've, gosh, for the I've, tea. I've seen a lot of oceans from a lot of vantage points. Yeah. Maybe hop the pond. Yeah. Head out to Liverpool. Nah. Another nah. side of that ocean. I don't know. I uh what about, what about see with Efrica? Hanging yeah, out. Yeah, what in about Efrica? Efrica. In, in the Bay Area was enough for me. That, that was that was plenty. It was good. It was good. Full full uh uh full to burst in when it comes to beaches. I mean, I, I kind of want to just redo our entire Bones podcast from yesterday. <laughs> talking just about talk the, about the, the, talk about the trip. The experience, yeah. What do you mean? Oh no, I was just looking Brian dead in the eye. Yeah. To establish a rapport. Yeah. And then we can take it from there. Yeah. We're building a foundation of trust. Yeah. When one might otherwise phrase it as judging me. That's <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You're just a being... haunted house that I'm... exists behind those <laughs> eyes, man. I'm just I'm just I'm just being <laughs> playful. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're live. We're going to do the Weird Things program in a few minutes. <laughs> that, playful, that playful refrain. Stop judging me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's tough because whenever Andrew isn't here. It turns into great. I was yeah. about to say. Exactly. It's very, yeah. Like, like, like I, that, that's the difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As Andrew's the adult. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's hard when the adult's not here because Brian and I will eventually just pull down our pants and run around the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And an adult that's, is the only person who's going to say that's inappropriate. That's you shouldn't do it. We just can't yeah. do it two weeks in a row. We just got to space them out a little. You space them out. Space them out. Space oh, them out. Hey. Hey. Um, I'm space in here. Oh. oh. I built. Uh, I built furniture. Oh yeah. Today Go on, on stream. I, uh, when I built, you say I, built, I, I, uh, patio. Like, 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 did did you assemble an IKEA thing or Wayfair? But yeah, a lot okay. of Allen wrenching. Uh, but two love okay, seats that's, that's and not, four that's two two. two oh, well, following the that's not even real built. You might as well have been doing Lego, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I if I could get patio furniture out of it, I'd prefer it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, but now I have four chairs and two love seats, two tables. Ooh, there's a lot of wrenching, man. A lot of wrenching. I also, I think I might. This might be my last episode. Really? Of weird things. Yeah. Oh wow. This might because I think I'm going to pivot full time into being a Wayfair influencer. <laughs> They're wow. real. They're real. For I'm the sure. record. Who are you trying to influence? Wayfair or the customers of Wayfair? People who want to buy shit from Wayfair. Right. Mm -hmm. So they will. So this. There, there are influencers who just build the things. And then get, I think if you're in like their brand ambassador program, then if people buy it, you get a cut on it. And then I think you just can sell these things. So it's basically a tournament. Oh my gosh, oh it's my Tupperware. God. No, that's amazing. Yeah. It's, so so, so it's basically Cutco. it's, it's, it's a, uh, a ladder tournament of who's the best at selling Wayfair stuff. Mm -hmm. And only you do it for free. And then when somebody uses your code, you win. Basically, well, I mean, like, it's just your content. Yeah. Familiar with YouTube? I've heard of it. Yeah. So it's like, that's just instead of thinking of, uh, uh, thinking of like how you can swallow dynamite or whatever stuff you do, <laughs> <laughs> you build a patio set. <laughs> it's a lot easier. Swallow dynamite <laughs> or whatever it is you do. Yeah. Oh my God, that is the best. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, you know, it like like I know you guys sit down and you're like, what are we gonna do on Modern Rogue this week? Right. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, does a spike go through eyes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number so one eye spike. Spoilers. Like, spoilers. Comfortably on the mark. Yeah. I'm not okay. So with instead eyes. of that, I, my new career, <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, check out this love scene. new Will Ottomans. <laughs> new Ottoman. Who this? I build the Ottoman. <laughs> I got a lot of catchphrases. <laughs> 
the dis is white is yeah. dark. We're never gonna start weird things, are we? <laughs> no, this is this just is gonna be the show. We're yeah. just gonna do bones twenty four seven. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my resignation. I'm just gonna build <laughs> our new show. I'm gonna is build Autumn. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. You're look at look at look at that. You're looking <laughs> snug as a bug in a rug. Exactly. Oh. It's in the little shady part in the back of my my backyard. Did you hit that. You hit that pin. Oh, there you go. Yeah, look at that. You're having fun out there. Yeah, you're maxing and relaxing. I was both. You need you, now. You need to get a little a little shade to kind of dis- diffuse some of that light for all of your future sponsored content. My future I, I, content. I, I think they have yeah. some extra of those. Uh, oh, those sales. Uh, yeah, I actually yeah, was sales. thinking about we might we might need to put those up because yeah, now I, we have enough. I think we, we, have, we, 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 we have enough stuff back there that yeah. it's like. It's already pretty shaded, but if we could actually keep it livable during the summer, that would be. I, epic. I did not expect the sails to last as long as they have, uh, mm. like like through rain and wind yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, those sunshades do last pretty well. I, I think the one that I have at my apartment, which is not a sail, but it's just a rectangle, is probably the similar thing, uh, and it it's holding up. It's just plastic, I guess. <laughs> just, just live forever. We have to start the show. We got to start the show. Okay. Because, I, I, or do no, we? Do we? Because we got to yeah, start the maybe, clock, maybe or else the, the clock's clock. never going to start, and we're just going to walk, and then we're just going to walk away. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. 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 And Bryce did <sighs> ten minutes of research, so we're going to have to get to it. <laughs> I don't want to disrespect him. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Let's do the weird things program in three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things program. It's a podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined, as always, with one Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. And Justin Robert Young. Sir. 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 The three of us, as it always has been. Always us. Yep. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, uh, hey. space elevators. Uh, uh-huh. Reusable rockets. Hey, speaking yep. of space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this- I was thinking about space. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Were you dreaming about it? Or have no, you about it? I had a weird dream last night. Go on. I dreamt that my mom stabbed my stepdad in the arm with an ice pick, and she said she didn't remember doing it. Uh, are you sure it didn't actually happen? Want me to call her? No, now we're just uh, doing see? great night. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're just doing great night. All right, all right. We're just doing great night. All Speaking right. of space. space. Uh, NASA, uh, NASA came out the other day and uh, tapped Blue Origin to make a lunar lander. Uh, that seems like a thing that they have definitely are ready to do. I was about to say, uh, uh, so the company that has yet to make it to orbit is mm-hmm. the one in charge of I guess landing. They're pretty good oh, at landing. Well, hey, this, no, so no, 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 no. This will so, be, yeah. it's a ha-ha, ha-ha. I ah, weirded you out on that you did. one. You did, yeah. This is not the first human land, lunar lander. This will be the second lunar lander that NASA's ordered. This would be after, presumably, SpaceX. The SpaceX is one. So, uh, and this this Blue Origin one would go out in about 2029 with Artemis Five. I feel like we've actually, this is a very, very important milestone. Because when this podcast began, the popular theory... Uh, was and and I, I think you know to to a certain extent it had uh, a truth to it mm. that NASA was underfunded and it was a sign that we had moved on in our priorities and were no longer interested in space exploration. And I am here to say that in the year of our Lord 2023, they've got too much damn money because the <laughs> only reason why this happened is because Blue Origin got cheesed off. That SpaceX won the the pitch the contract, for contract. the contract yeah. for that lunar lander. They complained and lobbied, and they got the chance to build another lunar lander. Now, now why is that the case? It, I mean, it, what, what, why doesn't SpaceX just build four? I mean, if we know that that's the one that we want for the price that we want, we have a line on this. NASA, okay. NASA said adding another human landing system partner to NASA's Artemis pro- program will increase competition, reduce costs to taxpayers, support a regular cadence of lunar landings, further invest in the lunar economy, and help NASA achieve its goals on and around the moon in preparation for future astronaut missions to Mars. And who said that? Uh, NASA said that. <laughs> the people who had the money are spending Wait, the money. That's not what yeah. we're seeing on Twitter. Well, what are we seeing here on Twitter? We're seeing Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Is that Oh, I thought you were reading that. No, I'm sorry. I'm oh, reading okay. I'm reading a different Sorry. line uh, that NASA Sorry, gave Sorry, because because it ended it ended with with the same word. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> no. So uh, so so NASA says that this is partly a competition thing. I mean, yeah, we could have SpaceX 
make four of them, but we could have two of them try two designs. That's not what it is. I, I, wait, what is it? Hold on. It's, it's, it's Blue Origin one in their piece, and so they get their piece. I mean, to be honest, I, yeah, there's I am, not a, in a, general, a in of... favor of more more people doing more things, right? Sure, like, yeah. So, so was, I, I, to be honest, like, yeah, they're spending money, but they're spending less money than if the government tried to do everything on their own. And they're spending it on multiple companies, and they're kind of setting up a you know older brother, younger brother situation where they're going to compete. I, 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 there, there's very little about this that upsets me. They have a mission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one, they have the wrong company that's sending the rocket up, right? And so SpaceX got cheesed off about that because I think it's the SLS rocket that's going to do Project Artemis, okay, right? right. Uh, number, that's two, a, that's number two. That's number two. Number two. So SpaceX is like, well, I mean, come on. Like, they, they have never launched a thing. Like, uh, 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 let us at least get in on this. And they're like, okay, well, it'll be an open bidding for the lunar lander. SpaceX gets that. Guess what? They've spent the most, they spent the most stuff into, in, you know, past. They're farthest ahead. They farthest have ahead. The, yeah. It is the safest chain. and the cheapest. Right. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Blue Origin had to, had to team with, I forget what, what other company to make their pitches for this. Blue Origin got mad. This is not me speculating. This is on the record. Blue Origin got mad about the Lunar Lander thing that SpaceX won because they felt that SpaceX was undercutting them and X, Y, or Z. There was a whole lawsuit about whole that lawsuit. contract uh, that Blue Origin lost. They said the con That lawsuit said that NASA was totally right in that contract. And because, uh, you know, NASA wants to keep a better, uh, wants to keep a good relationship with everybody and Blue Origin were being big, fat babies they gave them this. Now, if we were talking about the Artemis, the Artemis series, like because the, the reason why that explanation doesn't hold water to me is mm -hmm. the is the point of it is we want a bunch of these because we're doing a bunch of missions to the moon. Right. Yeah. Right now we're not. Right. So you're telling me that we're just gonna have I mean, I, I don't know, it just feels like Blue Origin wanted to get paid. They're gonna make this little lander. It's never going to uh, do anything. And and mm -hmm. that's the end of it. it I will say, or just from what I can tell, defund NASA. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I I believe SpaceX is also involved in Artemis Four. Uh, oh, that was previously. Okay, yeah. I uh, I look. I mean, who 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 else should it be? I mean, are you are you do you are you are you are you? They had it the solution. SpaceX. They had the solution. The solution was done. That you had you had a job. You had. People that were doing the job, mm -hmm. they are building another one to keep a relationship with Blue Origin because Blue Origin screamed and yelled about this. And I, that's it. I am of the opinion that uh, diverse, <laughs> diversification of, of portfolio assets is a good thing. So you don't want to just have, like, for example, when the shuttle program shut down, that was a scary moment when the only way to get to space was to go to the Russians, you Who know, we were to, always going to be friends with, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, 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 I like, I don't know. I, I, I'm a fan of the diversification. Yes. It's inefficient. Yes. It's dumb. Yes. It's a payola scheme or whatever, but I'm still here for it because at least we now have two different people competing, but on they're not lunar landers. They're no, they're making another one because the, they mean like, I guess here, look, them competing, sure. Them competing as contractors, that's great. Right. Mm -hmm. Guess what? One team won. The other team lost. And then the other team complained until the government bought their thing too. And, and what I don't yeah. want is for this class of contractors, which I think we can all agree is beneficial to uh, space exp uh, exploration and the United States government in that they are quicker, they are lighter, and they are cheaper. They are moving things forward at a rapidly reduced price because the companies that we have to make these products have become very fat, very slow, and very entitled right. that they deserve to build everything. What I would like is for, in this case, Blue Origin Lost. That's fine. Look, there's going to be more trips. There's going to be more times in which they'll be able to bid. There's mm -hmm. going to be other issues. There's going to be other opportunities for them to to bid on things, and, and maybe they'll get it right next time. But when you're rewarding them just complaining, then you're creating the same culture that we were getting away from with Northrop, Boeing, mm -hmm. and and everybody. All the and, 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 yeah. and Lockheed. Like the, 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 the way that we get there is by the government saying, Oh, all right. 
you get one too, and here's another gigantic contract that that you get to uh, keep running your company on. Do you, but given the amount of R and D and 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 just production time it takes, especially as these companies are still getting into the rhythm of this, isn't it? It it seems prudent to have at least another iron in the fire that we know is for a later phase of of the of going we, back we to do the moon. i mean it's not like they're not in contact it's not like they, like they're not being looped in on this kind of stuff that they're going to be looking forward to it's i mean i guess here's my question yeah if blue origin had not sued do you believe that they would have gotten this lunar lander no so we are rewarding them for suing because they lost a the contract uh, and we are dressing it up as competition. I, I I I might have to look up the the history of this more, but it's it seemed like NASA initially wanted multiple partners, and then uh, with did not get funding from Congress to do all of that that it wanted. I, I, uh, I apparently I, competition was in the in the papers all along. I don't know what that ultimately means for this today, uh, but I, I don't know. I'm having a hard time. Uh, I, I'm having a hard time wondering why we should also put more all of our eggs in one basket again, especially after the SLS. Because the SLS sucked, and and the other th exactly, and, and the other and, and the and, other contractors. Part, part of the reason it sucked is because there was no competition. It, even if it's well, no, uh, no, there was competition. Sorry, God. Uh, what, 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 uh, my point being, uh, 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 if I'm hearing Bryce correctly. Um, Yes, this is a stupid waste of money, but it is a stupid waste of money in service of uh, diversification of a por por portfolio so that if, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say tomorrow Elon Musk wakes up and decides that he is a communist and, and, and he thinks America needs to go down, uh, then at least we have another option. Uh, there, is an e yeah, there is an Elon wildcard element to this that is... Tough to verbalize, but I think is very real. But but, but yeah, I mean, he, he certainly has shown that he's willing to make massive changes of opinion in a very short amount of time, and that would be very bad for the strategic, you know, powers of the United States. As opposed to the famously solid personal life of Jeff Bezos. I mean, look, man. I mean, if, 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 if we are, if, if, if we're looking at what business, you're asserting, if, if what you're asserting is that that's a good reason to not have two options instead of one I, I, look I, I, i'm fine with with two options if that was the plan then that was going to be the plan my my only issue is i don't want this generation of contractors to grow up and be rewarded for entitled spoiled behavior that we had with the ones that has created the military industrial complex for which saddles america with bad tech slow windows and a, a, a sizable load onto our national debt. What I would like is for this generation of contractors to understand that when you lose, wait for the next one. It, like, like you've got it. You got enough money in the bank. You, you, I mean, if is if, a six is a mission that is five or six years off, not the next one. I mean, for twenty, this would be twenty twenty nine. Again, again, I, I, as, I, I, as, okay. as I understand it, yeah, yeah. there was a pitch process. There was a contract that was out there. One company got it. The other company was very upset that they did not get it. They raised a gigantic stink about it. And guess what? They got one. And so that's fine. I, maybe I'm being too miserly here. And maybe I'm being too dismissive of, 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 of the competition element. There are multiple billions at stake. I mean, it's not, a, it's not exactly pocket, and, pocket no. change, uh, for sure. To be honest, that's part of the problem is that the numbers at some point get big enough that the these three podcasters can't really <laughs> comprehend the numbers anymore. I, yeah, I can't do anything with a 3.4 billion dollar contract. Right. Um or how it compares to the space. And that's the thing. It's like it was it was it was authorized by Congress for less than getting two, right? According to the decisions that NASA made. So they got one and they were upset that uh, Blue Origin was upset that they weren't the one. So they complained, more money fell out of the sky and now we get another lunar lander. Well, and and if we're discussing a you know real housewives of Washington D.C., then then yes, uh, uh, that story absolutely tracks with me. But knowing that this is you know the stakes are humanity's ability to get off of this dumb petri dish that we're locked into, uh, that makes me that that personally that sort of short circuits my ability to 
think about like uh, uh, winners, losers, fairness, or all that. Like all I know is we have we have two people working on the problem and not one. I mean, that, that is yeah. another thing, right? Like, w w uh, what is the profitability we're expecting from NASA here? They are basically a public service if we're looking at their mission to, to a certain degree. Um, I mean the profitability. It, Th there is no profitability there, is the point. It, like, yeah. I, like it, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's... But they do operate on budgets, budgets that are greenlit by the people of the United States of America and their representatives, and mm. we want to have the most shots at doing what we want to do, and it would help to spread our budgets, even though they're astronomical, uh, we would, it would help to use them wisely, would, right? Uh, th uh, if, uh, if, I, if, I'm a, if I'm out of line on this, let, let me know. If, if Blue Origin was, uh, had more big successes, if we thought of them as a, maybe a couple clicks better of let's a say, aerospace you know, company. Let, let's set the bar fairly low. Let's say just go around the earth once. If, just make it one lap around the earth. If they had a bit of a stronger uh, track record, uh, versus SpaceX, which is kind of domineering at the moment, would this feel better to you? And this is, a, obviously this is just a hypothetical of a hypothetical, but is, is that a part of it? The fact that Blue Origin feels a little green origin? No, <laughs> I mean, to be totally honest, it's mostly just the fact that like, let's say hypothetically, yeah. they were a man who was extraordinarily rich, who got into the space business, mm -hmm. has done well, not, it, not industry leading, but well, that, that understands that there's a lot of money at stake for these contracts and maybe understands how the game is played to the point of buying the local newspaper that uh, everybody reads yeah. in Washington, D.C. Like, and then we're going to celebrate and jump up and down the fact that so, because so, he pissed his pants, uh, uh, he gets $3.4 billion for a space company. The it, timeline thank, is definitely thank, unfortunate. Like, oh, it's definitely hooray, a bad hooray. Like, I, I, I have nothing against Blue Origin. I hope Blue Origin does great. And, and I, I do resent the idea that I would be looked at as anti-competition <laughs> when they're... They're going to no. keep competing. They should. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. thrilled that they are competing. I am thrilled. I, I want Blue Origin to continue to step up. Mm -hmm. I want them to keep uh, uh, you know, SpaceX's uh, feet to the fire. Because to me, that class of entrepreneurial space companies is the antidote to the SLS crew of all these old school uh, uh, government manufacturers that spend a, insane money and deliver bupkis. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's so that's my thought. Th this is a uh, a fairness play in in your uh, it, heart. The story. I mean, I I I I track what you're saying, Justin, about the narrative. Of this looks bad, right? Of you know, there was already a pitch process, and then the budget was changed per all of the. It's not like they changed the process via Mad Max law rules. It it was the law. They did it right, um, which meant. Shutting, shuttering that down to one, which yeah. was SpaceX, uh, and then the lawsuit, and then this, th hey, the money got found again. Like, uh, I definitely see that that line doesn't exactly pass a sniff test, but I also think we, it, the end result is probably okay. I guess is where I'm at. The well, end result I mean, probably the, okay. The, the, the end result is the most unremarkable thing about this story. <laughs> Like, like, like the, the contract the awarded yeah, to company. Yeah. The government gave $3.4 billion to a contractor is yawn, right? Yeah. That, that happens constantly. There is no question about that being, uh, uh in any way a story. It's just, yeah. I, I want, I would love, I would love better. Well, you know, uh, if you want better, uh, you could have heard about that story before everyone else if you were over on our Patreon, patreon.com slash weird things. Explain to me this Patreon. I've been hearing all kinds of things about it. Well, uh, it's so a, you get mm -hmm. money, what do you get? Well, you get listen. You get to listen to the After Things podcast earlier. You get access to the weird list, which I put out the other day, which included this Blue Origin story. So you could have hey. been on top of it before us. Uh, all get get uh, inbox updates, get it on an easy RSS feed, patreon.com slash weird things is where you can go to support us. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I got I'm another story. I got another story for you here. Um, let me pull up a a sound here and uh, I'd like to tell I'd like you to tell me what you believe we're listening to. Should, should, should we not look at the uh, display monitor? Yeah, that's point? fine. Oh, that's a different thing. Okay. Here it is. All right. Sounds underwater. 
Oh, that's funny because I I thought it almost sounded like like uh, the noise that happens on a plane, like it like like the room tone of flying through the air. It does sound like a neutral white noise. Yeah, it does. No rhythm. <laughs> okay. Good credit. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's, it's statistics <laughs> because the system is rigged. <laughs> We have to edit that out. Um, so that is a, I'm an ally. That's a that's a recording of Pando. Do you know Pando? No. Uh, Pando, <laughs> Latin for I spread, uh, is uh, a single tree that has forty seven thousand tree size stems. It is a one hundred acre long tree. It is a forest sized tree. It. Is this the single biggest uh, organism on the planet? Or I believe it is certainly up there. If that is not the case, like, I, I do remember hearing that uh, most of the Rocky Mountains were essentially one tree with a whole bunch of trees poking out. Um, and I, I think that is a, a a bit of it. We've got a li- landscape shot to show you about how much the singular tree of Panda would be. Um, that's that's about. 100 acres, 40 hectares in Utah. So what we were listening to uh, is a recording from inside of Pando. Uh, Sound artists have put out a a bunch of recordings about the largest tree, um, including that one. That one was taken with a contact mic that was uh, put into a a hollow trunk. Do do you know contact mics? Uh, Uh, Are you aware of them? I, I would imagine they're microphones that make contact with things and listen. Yes. So they uh, uh, instead of a normal mic, which might have a ribbon or an element that you vibrate with sound, a contact mic is more like a little. It's like a little BB. Well, it's a bit bigger than a BB, but it's a it's a hard little ball, um, and you normally use it underwater a lot. But the vibrations directly on that surface uh, are what create the signal. So you hear it a lot underwater um, here in a in in a tree where you just have to make kind of contact with some of the ground. You pick up those vibrations. So uh, are, are we hearing the local environment through the tree or we're hearing the actual no, we, we, processes we, of the tree? I, I, think, I think we're just hearing, yeah, just what happened. Like, this is inside a tree. It, w- it would so, be like water flowing through the uh, 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 phloem and xylem. Or, or, yeah. or, I hmm. forget what it's called. But. So uh, sound artist Jeff Rice uh, recorded that. He said in a statement, hydrophones don't need water to work. They can pick up vibrations from surfaces like roots as well. And when I put on my headphones, I was instantly surprised. Something, something was happening. There was a faint sound. Um, and so that vibration, you know, if you listen to it, it could be, uh, it could be a bunch of things, right? Is it material flowing through the roots? Is it the wind blowing the leaves yeah. across it. it. It could be. It could actually be all of those things because we don't know what. The oh, sound that's is. interesting. I hadn't considered. Uh, so the biggest thing, uh, I assume, that just the act of walking around the tree would be the biggest, like thunk, thunk, thunk. Uh, but but if you're close enough to the mic, yeah. Right. A- absent that, I love the idea that it might be the the uh, sound of the uh, leaves rustling in the I, wind. Yeah, I, I think that it's really really funny that. Uh, you went to underwater, right? And I went to in, in the, the air. air. And it turns out it's both. It could, it be, could be both, both. Yeah. right? Yeah, because yeah, it, it, it's either this massive network of essentially tree blood circulating through all of these uh, uh, necessary appendages or the fact that it is up in the air and it's being kind of naturally jostled around by, by uh, uh, breezes. Yeah. Especially because, like, this individual has so many tendrils all the way uh, over such a large area that that does, I mean, you would assume everything would boil down to white noise, sim- uh, similar to like when you use a white noise app, uh, uh, maybe you'll hear a cityscape and it's yeah. the uh, cacophony of everything from cars to humans to, you know. And okay, here, okay, here's one. All right. Yeah, here's, let's go. okay, hmm. I'm, 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 br- I'm brain blasting on this one. Blast Good. it. Let's Blast say, that brain. Let's say we record 100 hours of the Pando with this hydrophone mic. Pando. Yeah. Pando. And Pando, then we Pando, fed Pando, that. Pando. Could we? Could you feed that audio data into like a machine learning thing to find 
patterns in that noise similar to like a slow scan. Like slow scans just sounds like gibberish, uh, right. but it actually has a, it's a coding encoding um, message or like a modem, well, and, a dial uh, modem. Uh, 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 to be honest, I think you're onto something because all of quantum, quantum mechanics, uh, uh, you know, as we get these uh, super colliders, we smash atoms together and then we examine the results. Uh, uh, the metaphor is it's equivalent to trying to figure out how a piano works by dropping them repeatedly from a <laughs> five-story building. And, yeah. And, yeah. And so the answer is uh, not only yes, is that plausible? Yes, we're already doing it in, a, in another realm. Yeah. Uh, just listening to the noise and trying to figure out the signal. Because, you know, if you, if you were able to listen to a plant or the way it responds to things... Uh, you know, I, I, like a buddy of mine was used to work in uh, hydroponics and ro robotic f farming. Hell yeah! And you had you take a lot of samples and you look at the water and the soil and all. But if you could also have just a little connection right to the plant to say, oh, I need I need more glucose. I need more sunlight. That is a fascinating idea that could be on the near future horizon. Being able to interface with the via plant? a chat bot with a plant yeah have you seen Basically where people hook translating up a... so so uh okay so it's like if you're like you're a, a, this plant like a, like right like, right like like, like, like like hey you want water nah right yeah but, i'm uh, good uh, i'm good so so really we're talking about a simple translation in, 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 engine yeah. where it's like uh, uh, definitely a plant wants things at various times i want more sunlight i want more water or whatever yeah but it's like use your chat gpts to just phrase it in a more colloquial sense. It's like, mm -hmm. motherfucker, give me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are looking at a nude egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, let me play this because this got me thinking about this. Um, this is Myko Lyko. Racism and cursing. <laughs> <laughs> We're already at two. I'm going to play something here. What are we listening to? I do believe this is the soundtrack of Andrew Maine's brain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they come from San Francisco, <laughs> influencing your kids with mind-altering drugs. <laughs> This is uh, uh, Michael Lyko on YouTube. They say, through the magic or rather science of biodata sonification, this flush of oyster mushrooms is playing a modular synth. What? It is using a, uh, a process similar to a lie detector where it feeds a small signal into it uh, and then out through the, through the mushroom again to create sound data. Is that for real? Yeah, I I don't know how much projection is happening on this, right? Because because at some point in the UI, like uh, the mere fact that it's rhythmical tells me that that we're seeing a translation. Again, I'm I'm undercutting my own argument about <laughs> ChatGPT for trees uh, as a translation device. I don't know. It's it's interesting. Uh, we well, know plants are plants are alive. Yeah, but here's here's the thing for the ChatGPT stuff. What yeah, a lot of the tremendous promise of AI is that it notices things that would be even to a, an extraordinarily powerful human brain imperceptible because it, it's good at recognizing patterns, things that like might like a uh, 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 fuzz out after a certain point. But if you are putting something that powerful that has that kind of cognition with that amount of repetition, that they'll be able to find certain things. So the idea of the plant talking to your plant, like right now we have a very rudimentary way of doing stuff like that. Like there's gardening apps that'll just tell you based on a timer, Feed like, me. like, like, Hey, uh, uh, water your plants. Now it's time. And maybe they get smart because they use the time data and, and they can tell when sunrise is and when sunset is and how hot it's going to be. And, and they can make educated guesses as to X, Y, or Z. <gasps> what if, <gasps> what if, okay. Uh oh, brain! I'm brain blasting again. Oh okay. my, two blast, blast. two blasts, and I think it was only a ten minute refractory <laughs> period. So this dude is on one. Okay, so it is June. Go ahead, let's put that mm -hmm. brain on blast. We we hook up a plant to uh, we hook up a plant so we can understand what it's thinking. Hell yeah, and then. We use plants as sensors, right? You're just like the the time of day, sun sun up, sun down. Plants keep track. You've ever seen a sunflower? 
you know, uh, precipitation, uh, pH, like activity. You like if you could make a way to translate that very miniature, you could tech you could technologize. So, so in plants. other words, instead of setting up uh, uh, weather stations all over the planet, what if instead we were able to just listen to the existing biological plants. creatures yeah. that no. that are in all of these places? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I I think that this is. Eminently possible by way of my full and complete knowledge of <laughs> botany and artificial intelligence and large language models. Uh, I am here to say not only possible, but will happen within the next six weeks. Wow. <laughs> six weeks. Okay. Take that one in gadget. <laughs> Run with it. Uh, I got another story here for you. This is uh, a little more businessy than weird. Uh, do you know Wilder Harrier? Have you heard of Wilder Harrier? Uh, we're not talking about the jet, are we? No, we're talking about a uh, dog food company. Uh, uh, they were interviewed uh, and talking about one of their main ingredients. Uh, uh, we are selling a product that we hope gets discontinued. Do you know what they are doing with the product? No, it, but, I, it, but, I, but, but I, 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 did, I did see... Uh, Brian's ears perk up, uh, uh, sensing a marketing, <laughs> a, a, a marketing uh, uh, ploy by this dog food company. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, to to come out and say we want this to go away is a very good marketing. Mr. Ploy. Ben says it may sound weird to be actively selling a product that we hope gets discontinued, but that's part of our purpose because we want to make a difference. Is it is it like cancer curing dog food? Mm, no, no. Is it diet dog food for fat dogs that are so fat that they can't get through the door because there's because also because the door is small, but also, also, also the dogs are fat. And also the dogs are fat. I, I think possibly. Uh, okay. Is it is it fat fat fat? T fatty dog dog okay. is the product. <laughs> Fatty dog dog. Unfortunately, not the product. Is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> Pull over. This bitch is too fat. <laughs> <laughs> so they make a... So it's what they call lady dogs. It's what lady dogs are called, I know. It's what they're called. I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> lady dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> the Wilder Harrier offer a sustainable fish formula mm. where they make it using silver carp. Uh, silver carp silver are... Silver carp. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on. Why, why do they hate silver carp? Well, they are an unwanted uh, invasive species Ooh, to Ontario. That's great. That's brilliant. That's right. And so the dogs are less picky. Um, they are safe for humans to eat. Silver carp is quoted as being, quote, quite palatable. But dogs uh, don't don't care. As dogs much. don't care none. Yeah. So, OK, so they're going to overfish this invasive uh, invasive species because nobody is going to protect it and it's good for the environment. Uh, yeah, basically. Um, Brian, this is a good marketing thing, right? It, it, it absolutely is. Yeah. It's, it's it's brilliant. I love everything about it. I approve. Yeah. Um, so there you go. <laughs> it's like uh, we, it's a dog food based purely on pirated music. <laughs> <laughs> dog food with a fire starter in every bag. <laughs> uh, I've got a picture up here on screen for a new topic here. Yeah. Uh, what are we? Can you describe the image that we're looking at for our listeners? Kind of looks if, like an eyeball. If I, I like was gonna guess, I would say uh, some kind of jellyfish. Uh, yeah. So, some some kind of quirky bottom of the ocean. Oh, uh, speaking of which, quick uh, side jag. Mm -hmm. We went to the um, uh, Academy of Science Museum in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, saw something never seen before. Uh, those fish that are at the bottom of the ocean where everything is nice and dark and they bioluminesce. Yeah. You know, they're, oh, yeah. they're flashy bits. Um, angler fish is that, I think, what they're... Uh, correct. But it wasn't specifically an angler fish. But uh, I... I know I've seen some at other aquariums, but for the first time, they had an entire section of the museum that was darkened. It was it was Ooh. pitch black. And yeah, you, and you get all the way up, 
and then you just see these little flashes all over the place. I still have no idea what the shape of the fish was, but that presentation uh, was, was, awesome. was the most electric, alive. Uh, I would have turned my awesome. camera flash on so I could see those MFers. You would have uh, gotten uh, escorted uh, out. Uh, Let me see him. Let that, me see him. That is a real they thing. They would have thrown you there. They, no they would but not have been not pleased. That's Get the danger of, of knowledge. That's the danger of knowledge, listener. They yeah, don't want exactly. you to know. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. So we got to know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Catino four, a Satino four, Catino four, uh, a comb jellyfish. Oh, it is. It is. Uh, this is uh, on your screen because uh, scientists used to believe that sponges or porifera were the quote first uh, multicellular animal. Um, but now new data is suggesting that it's actually the comb jellyfish that is the first first. Um, uh, they have apparently more differentiated uh, nervous system compared to true jellyfish fish, but they are these comb jellyfish are still considered the first. So, uh, how long ago do you think maybe that is? Uh, I, I would 1981. say 1981. <laughs> first multicellular something or other that that would be an animal and not a plant. Um, so basically, this is supplanting the sponge. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I, I would say it's got to be like 30 million years ago. Uh, Six, 60 million? Six, uh, 67 million. 300 million years ago. A billion really? years ago. 600 to 700 million years ago. Holy moly. Yeah. Uh, it's, a it's a possibility. Uh, That's way longer than 81. It is way longer than 1981. <laughs> yeah. Man, I boofed that one. <laughs> uh, but this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, just neat. This is just kind of a neat story. And it's a weird looking jellyfish. Yeah. It looks it does look like an eyeball. It looks like an eyeball or like a Final Fantasy like spaceship. Or a a, a logo for a, a AI tech firm. Oh yeah. yeah. We bring the future <laughs> yourselves. Yeah, no, it looks like the final image in like a commercial that you'd see in the middle of a golf tournament. <laughs> like <laughs> science. <laughs> It's Technology. always around us. <laughs> the sun. We bring it up. Yeah. Here's here's a glider. A glider that's powered on only dreams. <laughs> uh, okay, one last story here for you. Uh, the folks over at Gizmodo, uh, taking note of the uh, writer strike going on in Hollywood, uh, uh, said, "Hey, let's let's give it a let's give it a try. Could can we use an AI?" Yeah to write a script. Um, and what is the quality of a script like that? Um, it is- Who did, who did this? Uh, this was Gizmodo. Gizmodo. Gizmodo, the, uh, uh, the, the tech blogging. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were like, like, oh, okay, like everybody's talking about this. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a spin. We'll, we'll see uh, if we can ask chat GPT or, or another AI large language model to write a script. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, uh, just to kind of go over briefly some of the the issues that they found um, was that uh, uh, generally the ideas were pretty boring. Um, yeah. it, it came up with a lot of um, formulaic, formulaic. Yeah. Uh, in in the author's words here, uh, generative text based AI is good for coming up with first draft back cover copy. It has ideas for plots, but these are the kind of ideas that literally everyone who says I've always wanted to write a screenplay has kept in their wallets like old reward cards. These kinds of ideas are not worth much. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> yeah, one of the things. There, this is a deeply funny story. Oh, this yeah? is a very funny story. Go on. Because they're right. Gizmodo. They're right. No, no, no. They're right. Like, uh, uh, I don't believe that the the scripts, even the initial ideas, are something that you could hand to a writer and say rewrite. That wouldn't also just be a absolute. You you would have to come up with new. You might as ideas, well have just new them a new idea. Yeah, just yeah. pay them to do the original thing because that's the work that's going to have to be done. The reason why it won't be is because suits are not good at using those chatbots to write in the way that a writer would, in the right. way that a Hollywood writer would. Mm -hmm. a, a, and apparently... Example. And apparently, neither are Gizmodo writers. <laughs> <laughs> because you every, can every write a AI good script story, with that, every, but it is a writer's tool. Every AI story that you're reading right now 
boils down to the writer telling on themselves. Oh Whether my it's God. like, my AI wants me to leave my wife. That's, no, you want to leave your yeah, wife. That, AI is a terrible script writer. No, you are a terrible <laughs> script writer. <laughs> well, AI uh, designs the dumbest cars. No, you design, design the, the dumbest, dumbest cars. cars. <laughs> like, like, it is... Chatbots now are essentially a... They are closer to spell check than they are a magic box where final products come out. Mm. Like in that it is predictable, but you can just ask it to vomit out words. Uh, uh, that is yeah. now I, I would even say having worked with AI in, in writing stuff to even say that it's a first draft is probably giving it too terrible. much. It's a, it's a brainstorm. It's a brainstorm at best, uh, you know, uh, and 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 then when you give it stuff that you've written, it can suggest things and it can put things together and it can bring things into a more clarifying linear tone. Uh, 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 sometimes the ideas are are good if you know how to talk to it, if you know what to ask from it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, everybody's like like AI does dumb stuff. It's like oh god, those sweet sweet summer <laughs> children. Like all you're just talking about how you know. I got a trombone and it sounds bad. Trombones sound bad. <laughs> uh, li in Linda Codega, who wrote this article, in in more of her. Sorry, Linda. No, no, you're good. Uh, she continues. The best part of this experiment happened while I was analyzing just how bad the generated text was, identifying the weak spots, and spontaneously understanding how the AI had failed and brainstorming how I would have written it better. This might be a benefit of the tool—a way to figure out what might not be. to do, a way to create something that because the writer knows how writing works and how people should act, how plots should be put together, and how to set a scene. The AI is simply a machine for showing you the wrong way to do it. Uh, th this is a thing I've said from the beginning. And again, I know way more WGA members than I know studio heads. I am supportive of everybody who is standing up for what they what they believe in. And I'm not here to tell them how to run their strike. But However, these are writer's tools. You are going to use them far more than the studio will. Uh, if you box yourself in by saying that these things cannot be used, you will only wind up having to go back on them. The biggest thing that you need to be fighting for is the time that you are that you are spending uh, uh, being able to turn stuff in because that's going to be the actual consequence of AI in Hollywood is that studios will want stuff faster because they know that you have an ability to do it mm. and protecting those windows will ultimately be the things that serve writers better than screaming and yelling about how the, the, the assistant to the assistant of the general studio manager uh, isn't going to crap out a two and a half men uh, script and then say, fix it. Mm -mm. And uh, I, I, I generally tend to agree. I think a lot of this stuff is a tool. I think it, it will be based on how it's used. Someone has to click the button. Like that's, that's the thing I kind of, Someone has to click a button to say, go, be birthed into existence, artificial intelligence operation. Um, but, but, but also, you know, comparing the Gizmodo demo, which was, hey, let's find a way for it to put together a screenplay. Uh, a few weeks ago, I saw this uh, pseudo write thing, which is also like a uh, help you write books and stuff uh, AI thing. And it's it's actually designed for this, right? It's designed for you to for you to write, for it to write, for it to edit, for you to edit. I legit love everything about this because the, yeah. the, uh, uh, the even the very first statement is blank page be gone. And uh, for me, uh, I, I've always thought of, of, of the metaphor of like, there are some people who love a blank page so they can download whatever's in their head onto the page. Other people need a lump of clay so they can look at it and figure out what's wrong with it. I'm very much a lump of clay person. So, so like getting over that blank page moment would be a tremendous benefit. And, and I, I, yeah. that's the thing just fill it with garbage so I can fix the garbage. Where the shape of the tool here is different, right? Ultimately, we're trying to do the same thing between these two experiments, but... Uh, as we saw with ChatGPT, having a specific, uh, you know, interface of make it look like a chatbot. People know how to chat with a chatbot. Um, here, make it make it like a writer's tool. Build features for writers, so they're not having to do you know do anything mode or you know having to do the the I don't know. We it's become well, I mean, voodoo a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like right now we're we we are already at a point where we are understanding that 
uh, chat GPT is something that is very, very popular because it is a do anything uh, a device. And so you are finding different things to do. You are constantly thinking, oh, I wonder if I could, if I could use it to order food. I could use it to do this. I could use it to come up with a, a, a dish to eat tonight. I can think of an idea uh, uh, and, and have it help me write it. The fact that AI, look, AI is going to be like fentanyl. It'll be in everything. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very good. That's it, very good. It, is that cut or not? Can we keep it in? We can keep it in, but nice. is it correct? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think uh, you're gonna will, you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna hate be into honey something. to find out whether or not AI is in whatever it is. You're gonna that you're gonna be into something I, that you never expected, yeah. and you're gonna be like, like, oh damn, there's AI in this. Except yeah. this time, you won't overdose. Take a I take a bite in my Taco Bell, and ah, oh, they put fentanyl. In. Yeah, damn it, I gotta throw this one away. Uh, I I had um, oh, God, I had a dumb uh -oh. idea. Uh -oh. go, go on, Bring go it on, Bring it. That uh, this is cause whatever it is, it's the caused. Stanley Cup final. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is between the Florida Panthers and the Vegas Golden Knights. Ooh, mm -hmm. that a uh, house divided. Um, and so I had this idea. Um, <laughs> was was the house Justin Soul? Is that what you were going for? No, this, a house right, divided. So I it's, just it's a it's a sports thing. I just had um, the following tweet. Just popped into my head. Yeah. This is the highest percentage of cocaine dealers for a Stanley Cup final per capita. Dot, dot, dot. My column. <laughs> just to write, like, the idea that somebody sure. would write that as a column. And then I was just going kind of to vicey. post um, a tweet thread. So I wouldn't actually write a column. <laughs> I would just, like, be summarizing, quote, unquote, the column. So you had yeah. AI write the rest of the thread. Mm -hmm. Okay. Buckle up, folks. We're diving into the stats <laughs> headfirst into a snow-covered arena. <laughs> In this mind-blowing Stanley Cup final, the mind numbers blowing. reveal a stunning surge. The percentage of eight balls and rails <laughs> dealers per capita hits are at an all-time high. Let's lace up our analytical skates and snort the data. <laughs> That's really good. It went for really good. five five tweets. That's good. It's good. <laughs> but I actually, all right. So I worked on that a lot. I actually okay. See so to get it there. Yeah. Uh, what was that process like? Bring us in. Bring us into the cocaine. First, tweet. first things. I uh, I was like, I don't even know what the best tweet thread people are. So I had it come up with the best, the most prolific tweet thread artists, the ones oh. that are shared the most. Uh, and then I was like, all right, we'll take their styles. Uh, and combine that into one person, and then I'm going to have you write a thing with the first. The first thing was mine, mm -hmm. and then I wanted you it. continue this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then it, it gave me a bunch of stuff, and it was a little like it was like okay, but then I'm like uh, include more cocaine specific <laughs> jargon, uh, and so it did. And then I'm like use more puns, and it did. So like eventually, and then it started using. Oh yeah, there was emojis. There's a lot of emojis. Oh no, there's a Are lot they, of a lot of snowflakes? snowmen, yeah. eight balls. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a couple uh, of noses. Yeah. So there. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, it takes it takes a little bit. Like like there's there's a lot of working with it if you want if you want to get it uh, uh, to kind of do what you want it to do. But ultimately, it's like people are thinking about this thing. In, in in all the wrong way like like it is it is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog plus 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 like there, it, it it does just vomit this stuff out and if you know how to talk to it and again that the one shining example that i have with all this is that it's actually rewarding clear communication yeah it's rewarding clear and concise Specific. sentence structure well that's the that's the meme right is like design jobs aren't going to go away because the client would have to know what they want <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, like there is a certain amount of that, but between the human interfacing element and wanting a thing, the human element to want a thing, you know, you can have the machine make all the numbers and lights and all you want, but uh, the idea, an idea matters as well. Now, but, but also it's like, and I think the next time that I have a big logo project, uh, uh, the worst part about any of it is started. me trying to think of what the hell I want, right? Before I go to a designer or an, or an illustrator or something like that. Now I can have a billion different judgment-free stabs at things that I want. Mm. And uh, uh, then I can give it to somebody else and say, hey, do you have an idea on how to take this to another level? Or, or do you have any other spins on this? Like, I, I, I just think that the, 
the anxiety over AI is way overblown as far as creativity goes. Like it is going to be an aid to yeah. people who want to be more creative in every facet. The Photoshop uh, generative stuff that they've had out in beta, I can I can totally see where I would I would use it all the time. It would be very helpful to just put a spider here, put a, a yeah, you know something to just give me something quick. Um, because it's not it's not like I couldn't go steal a picture of a spider and edit it so it's technically different and put it on the thing like it can it can just save me time from <laughs> from doing that you know so uh yeah uh, similarly uh, little things um i i was explaining to somebody that it's 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 not that there are jobs that uh, uh most of the jobs that people fear will disappear are jobs that do not yet exist. For example, if I'm, uh, I sent out an email about, uh, hey, we need to raise money for porta potties during the eclipse. So, a uh, uh, thing I would never do: spend fifty dollars to hire an artist to Photoshop a, an eclipse happening over a porta potty, right? Yeah. But thing I will do is enhance the email that I'm about to send out by just having Dolly, yeah, you know, put a porta potty in front of a, an eclipse happening, and then great. Now it's a a uh, objectively superior email mm -hmm. that cost me nothing essentially. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I, I just did it. I, I bought mid journey, a mid journey and, thing. And ultimately like you are, you are trading your time for money on that, right? Dolly, either Dolly credits or, or mid journey credits or what have you. Um, you know, the alternative is you sit down at Photoshop and do that, or you sit in front of the thing and you, you, you whip it up yourself, which is, is just part of the, uh, just part of how you use things. And yeah. Yeah. The concept and, and of using things in like society. I would never in my life after the Miami Heat beat the Boston Celtics, after the Florida Panthers beat the Boston Bruins, mm -hmm. uh, want to illustrate or hire somebody to have a smiling Jeb Bush in front of the city of Boston on fire. But I was able to do that <laughs> <laughs> very quickly. And it made my tweet uh, about it too. a lot better. Wow. Oh, is it? it that's the, like uh, <laughs> the meme Jeb too. Yeah. The, like Jeb. He Matt had his hands Jeb. outstretched like, or like, like to be totally honest, but I did, I have used them a lot for just cause I'm writing more with Substack. Just may or may not be able to help, but like, uh, thumbnails uh, like they have an AI gen gener generator in Substack. Uh, yeah, but I've just used Mid Journey just so I can store things. Like I have like you know Joe Biden smoking a cigarette like a cat daddy, uh, and and Trump as uh, uh, Galactus and like oh just, my god, just yeah. stuff that I can just keep in the ready because I'm eventually gonna talk about all of them a lot. So Which, I can just have these things that I can just throw into my Substack that make it more visually interesting and exciting. Which again, it's like as long as the end of the journey ends up with a person and not a, uh, a, a robot farm or a writing team or whatever, then yeah. people are going to be cool with. So it's like ultimately that was in your head, and now a version of it is now uh, something you here, could paste into uh, things. Also, I'm, 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 I'll talk about it here because we are, you know, this is a, a long running community, and we've talked about futurism for a very, very long time so I feel comfortable. Uh, here's the new rule with AI. Never mention and use it. Yeah. Ever. Don't, uh, don't tell on yourself. Yeah. Right. You, you're just better. Uh, you're better. Hey, what happened? Like, maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's, it's chat GPT. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. it's fine. Whatever. Let, let, let people speculate that it's, that it's X, Y, or Z. But do not. Don't. Nobody yeah. cares. There, there, is a, there is a certain Nobody amount of Nobody will be made happier to yeah. find yes. out that, that you used AI. There, there is some, there is a bit of navel gazing with it now, you know, like it, it's fun to see like the memes get expanded with the uncropping stuff. It's interesting to yeah. see the fine art stuff kind of expand, but you, you the, there's, there's a limit that that's a cool part of the technical side of it. Uh, but what else you got? Well, I mean, and, and look, and I want, I don't want to let, let that be read as a, as a, as a side swipe to our friend, Bill Meeks, who's here in the chat. He's oh, yeah. building a, a content company based on the idea of AI. He's using a lot of really, really, really cool tools in terms of voice modulation and, uh, uh, you know, animation and stuff like that yeah. to do, to augment his already extraordinarily talented, um, you know, uh, skills as an animator and a writer uh, and an actor. So like I, I'm, I'm, 
all on board uh, for for showing people the tools on and educating people on what you yeah. can do here. In general, though, if you are not specifically looking to to educate people on it and you are just using AI here and there, boy, is it my experience that people just want content. If you can create more content that people like, awesome. That's just, that's all that matters. Nobody would have cared if you were using a, 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 a typewriter. Yeah. Nobody would have cared but, if you were using a word because processor. Because the sheen of saying, like, I had a computer made this, make this, that sheen is wearing off. Pretty, seems quickly. Very, I, 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 IMO. In fact, I, I think it's already in the rearview mirror. Uh, uh, the, the way I phrase it is, and this is something that uh, the three of us have experienced versions of, mm. of Congrats. The whole world now has a writer's room. And the way a writer's room works is everybody pitches things mm -hmm. and the showrunner or the person who's directing the project says, that's not quite right, more like this. Yeah. And then they pitch again and then eventually it becomes right. And that's why it becomes known as, you know, a Dan Harmon project or a, a, a Robert Zemeckis project or whatever, because they know what is and isn't the voice that they want to do. Congrats. All of us have that now. And and it's, and uh, and a lot and a, like the layperson probably doesn't have a lot of opportunities to like creatively synthesize things. Just statistically speaking, I am probably am more creative in my day to day than maybe most office workers. Yeah, but, talk that talk. No, yeah, no, talk no, that no. talk. I just say, like, it is, eat it, office punch worker. Him in the face. Uh, Your dream has never have been have further away. Normies, it, am I right? Yeah, <laughs> Bryce. <laughs> Knowing what you want is not easy no um and just because you've got a blank sheet of paper doesn't mean you all already know what to write and you need to have that time of not knowing what to write of take of writing bad things of doing your kaiser, kaiser soze badly or or what have you um you kind of need to have that which is a very common early early part of the creative process you know is not being able to come up with an idea, looking at the at, at that box and saying, I don't know what to do with that. And maybe an AI gets you started. Maybe it gives you some uh, some kindling, uh, or maybe you maybe you get more creative. Well, maybe and, you get more creative. Th ooh, that, th ooh. there's so much value, and I know we're we're kind of drifting into after long, things territory. That's fine. But but uh, there's so much value to knowing that something's bad and asking yourself, why is this bad? Why is this wrong? Oh my wrong? God, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's the only way, uh, in my experience, to progress is to do something bad. You have to be bad to know how to be good. The yeah. biggest thing that I believe will soci change societally from AI is that first drafts, the process of creating a first draft will be looked at in the way that we have thought about it our entire lives as deeply humiliating and masochistic. Just sitting down and trying to write just an idea that, by that yourself. that idea of mm. a blank page, and then I'm just like, ah, I know this is a dumb idea. Hey, Why am I, I, but you have like, to get over uh, the hump of doing what, what it. I, yeah. What I call the garbage draft when yeah. we do World's Greatest Con, yeah. that will be looked at and understood as humiliating and uh, uh, like, like you, you enjoy, and some people will still want to do it, mm -hmm. but they will be looked at in a way of like, oh, okay, well, you, you need to punch yourself in the face before you write. I wonder if that's uh, the underlying energy of the idea of a prompt engineer, right? Like, uh, you have to know, you know, you have an to know AI what to put whisperer. into the box. Yeah, an AI whisperer more than just the prompt, right? Yeah. Like, how do you get what you want out of it between syntax and you know, creative and editorial. To be honest, um, uh, what one of the things I'm most proud of that Justin and I put together was episode one of season two of World's Greatest Con that begins with the question of, uh, you got 200 uh, uh, luminaries who are all going to perjure themselves in front of Congress. Why? And the answer is uh, uh, stage hypnosis. And so we go through the process of stage hypnosis and it's basically a seed that grows with the word yes, 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 and eliminating everybody who's not playing along to the level that you want to see. And in and, and all of my experience with AI has been shockingly reminiscent of, of that experience. It's like, uh, uh, please summarize this core idea. Great, now you understand it. 
now do it as though great now more this way less of this more of this and mm-hmm. then and all of a sudden you have it uh, writing doing script writing i was joking to justin that i successfully got uh, chat gpt to uh, uh within the construct of a movie scene get it to seriously make a case for how the digital underground song the humpty dance was a premonition of 9 11. uh uh yeah these are the venn diagrams that exist in the man's head and that's the center of it humpty dance. there are two things he's thinking about constantly and he found the center i'm just saying i'm just saying it took a little bit of hypnosis i think ai hypnotism is a real thing wow <laughs> two towers two towers i eat up all your crackers and your liquors is obviously a reference to the rationing that the government does the ra- right. okay that's, yeah. it's <laughs> look it's a it's a thing uh well uh that's gonna do it for the show here we list you want to do some picks what do you got yeah. let's pick it up pick it up hey pick it up, pick hey it up. i don't know i don't know if you've heard of this but mm-hmm. uh there's a new spider-man movie this there's time a text. there's a text going. that was sent okay yeah you read a text read the text sent okay. from brian brush oh, okay Brian Brushwood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Roach. Right. Yeah. Right. I may have tweeted out the same text. Oh, Andrew was in the thread too. That's why. I okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't find it. Anyway. Oh, here we go. Go see Spider Man before anyone says anything. It's good. This is a very important text because I didn't know that Brian was referring to himself as anyone <laughs> because they have. One person in my life that loves to will eventually things. just yep. tell me everything about yeah. this movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, and hey, I'm you. a barking dog. I'm gonna bark. I'm just. Uh, so this yeah, was yeah, yeah. this was this was this was with, with, with the same energy of an Islamic terrorist saying <laughs> the great Satan will one day fall. <laughs> Brian warned me about spoilers. From <laughs> warning, uh, uh, I am infected <laughs> with spoilerism. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, please respect the fact that I have spoilers. I think when, if I were to translate it and tell me if I'm far off, yeah. the text would have uh, just as accurately have been phrased. You have 48 hours of my tolerance. That's correct. Yes. At that, that is- point, there will be cracks. It's yep. not, yep. and it. I want there to 100% be one hundred percent correct. I want it to Boy, be know, st- know st- your teammate. I, I, yes. I want it to be firm forever. <laughs> but I'm letting you know that I got about 48 yep. hours uh, before I just start blurting things out. It's quite good. There you go. Uh, so Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, I listened to the soundtrack. Soundtrack's really good. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Metro Boomin. Very cool. Curated it. Yep. Uh, it, Rappers love Spider-Man. Uh, and, yeah. Like, there's just, like, because normally with, with movie soundtracks, even with, like, Black Panther, there was a lot of really, really good songs on the Black Panther soundtrack. It was one of the better movie soundtracks that have come out in recent history. Mm. Uh not a lot of references to like Wakanda or like anything. This is boy. Yeah. Turns out Lil, Brooklyn, Lil Wayne, yeah. Brooklyn, more relatable than Wakanda. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 Lil Wayne has a, a verse where every, uh, every three words is spider something. <laughs> That's what? amazing. That's cool. That's yeah. fun. That's funny. Okay, cool. Spider-Man. Uh, across the universe. Uh, yeah, by the uh, way, by the way, on preview night Thursday, oh. made seventeen and a half million dollars. Uh, it's a, a second, second place record breaker for a preview night uh, uh, mm. opening. I think it's good. Yeah, it's gonna do. Massive. It's gonna do great, and it deserves to because it's quite good. I I can't wait to see it again. Yeah. Um. All right. My pick is. Pick I think you should leave. Oh. There's a third season out. <laughs> I was I was disappointed because I thought the first episode was kind of weak compared to sure the first episode of is. the first two seasons, which like the first two episodes of those seasons are among the funniest things that have ever happened. The first season, like the first episode, is the, just the very opening just grabs you yes, by the genitals immediately. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, man, you know, you want to know what comedy's hard? It, you, it's <laughs> Hey, we'll give him a shot. <laughs> it's it's hard. It's hard, yeah. right? You know. And then I just kept watching, and God, it's it's just. I will say, like Brian, just see it immediately because it's too. You have memeable. forty-eight hours. It's too memeable. You, <laughs> you it's only already, ninety minutes. You are you are already thing. seeing memes from mm-hmm. this season. Uh, 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 Whether you uh, know it or not, men <laughs> men only want one thing, and it's effing disgusting with Tim Robinson on a zip line. Like there's, oh my gosh. there's just like the guitar ramp guitar. <laughs> oh my god! 
Watch it. Okay, Please watch it. It's so oh, good. And also, and short. Biff Whiff, uh, who's in that... Uh, that, that Shirt uh, Bro. Shirt Brother or uh, uh, Santa from Santa, last year. Santa, Detective Crashmore. Uh, he actually is uh, not doing well physically, and uh, he's got a, uh, a GoFundMe. So if you enjoyed those sketches, then uh, go ahead and uh, chuck the man some money. Uh, if you want to play the feed egg game, <laughs> uh, you can go to egggame.org. And uh, you can play the egg game. <laughs> I assume this is a reference to a thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you yeah. can just watch this. You can just <laughs> watch him eat these eggs. Dude, you ran out of eggs. Would you like to buy an 80 pack of eggs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bryce. What? what? That what one egg was 40 you, eggs? Do you, do, you, do you have a pick? <laughs> Um, uh, I so want him to do the thing, but he shouldn't I because can't. yeah. If I do, we'll get you can't. banned. You can't. <laughs> you are Is that against a, TOS? It must be. You can't show Bush on a TOS. All right. Um. Yeah. No. I, I'll double down on. I think you should. Four eggs. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna double down on. I think you should leave an egggame.org to play the egg game. You'll get it when you get it. Um. It's so funny. It's it's it really is. Like, Justin Justin has it right. Like these are the next memes. Yes. You are going to wake up, babe. New memes just dropped. <laughs> New memes just dropped. <laughs> uh, the only bummer is like it's such a shame that we have to wait so long to get ninety perfect <sighs> minutes, but not only ninety minutes of comedy. There's been a tragedy in the club community. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Now All right. now I, I I have I have homework to go do. All right. <laughs> well, that's gonna be where we Let's wrap it up. Podcast. Thank you to Justin and Brian. I've been Bryce. It's been weird. Hey. Uh, hey, so uh, five minutes into the show, I found out that I had totally forgotten about another appointment. Uh, <laughs> okay. You need so, to go? Uh, yeah, but even more importantly, I need you oh, guys you need to, to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should leave is what I'm yeah. trying to say. I have ten minutes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us here. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll give you some after things next time. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out. With You're us. the after things. You were, it was in you the whole time. That's right. That's right. You are looking at an after things. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.